So back to the sculpture. It's kind of why we want to make sure that this is going to the rib cage on the rib cage. Okay. So <clears throat> let's take a look at the concept art. So this is pretty much a vacuum pose. If you've ever seen guys do this, you know, whenever they're doing it, and you can see their rib cage is called a vacuum pose. And that's the reason that we see his um uh the beginning of his rib cage, <clears throat> which is very stylized, right? This is like a 180 degree line right here, right? Um, but I mean we can still play with that idea. Um but um it's good to kind of block it out this way. Okay. So <clears throat> um whenever you breathe in, your rib cage is going to expand out, right? Okay, so he's expanding that out. But you don't want to get in the habit of having everybody with like a full chest of air. Okay, but in this particular case, that's what we're going to do. Okay. So right here, we're going to have the end of the sternum, which is a xiphoid process. And we're going to put some false abs right here. Okay, so these abs, either you have or you don't. Okay, this is a genetic... Um, uh, this is dependent on your genetics. You can't do crunches until you get this. There's plenty of uh, bodybuilders that do have this and don't have this. Okay. So this one is going to end on the eighth rib in between the seventh and the eighth rib right here. Okay. And then this one is going to end at the um, belly button. And then right here is going to be the keg, okay? Another genetic uh, dependency is some will have it bisected, most will not, okay? <clears throat> so the next thing we want to do is we want to add our um, obliques. So let's take a look at the uh, hips, okay? goes up. This is the iliac spine or... Um, anterior iliac spine um, going up and then down, okay? So that's kind of what we want to have represented here. We don't want it to go straight across. We want it to go up and then down. Quick pause to introduce today's video sponsor, Class Creatives. They offer a top-ranked game design curriculum online. You'll have access to instructors with over 25 years of professional industry experience and over a decade of accredited university level instruction. Get started today for free with a link in the description. Okay. And so this iliac crest is a very uh, important area because this is where um, your lat is going to end on the posterior iliac spine. We're going to have a little fossa right here. And then your obliques come from each rib all the way to nine, okay? So it attaches here, 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 and then goes down. That's the reason we're only going to see the eighth rib. And then after that, nine and 10 are going to be covered in muscle, okay? So this is our ninth rib because this is the last serratus. And then we're going to come forward and we're going to go back. Okay. So right here, right there, and we kind of want to block it out first, okay? And then these back here are going to be the only ones that are digitized, right? So coming off of the rib cage, you'll see little separations, and then everything else will be very, uh, we'll just have one shape. But I suggest getting the overall shape first before digitizing your muscles. Okay. So now we can see we can go a little bit further back and then we can have a little bit more space here. So <clears throat> the front of your obliques here are going to have a, um, a plane right here, a very flat plane 
right there. And I'm using the trim dynamic right now. So I'm kind of putting all these little form changes all into one plane right here. So if it's ever getting too messy, feel free to use that. And what do we do with someone who's muscular instead of super thin? Everything is going to go into the bony landmark. So we can cut this in a bit more. So we can signify that he's got strong obliques. Okay. So the overall shape, we want to kind of go straight down, poof out a little bit, and then come back in. Okay. So now we have the uh, serratus muscles. We've got this little six one right here, right? That we can put right there. That's going to be the first one. And then your anterior serratus are going to go in between each one of these. Okay. And so now we've got the upper torso kind of blocked out. Okay. So uh, what we can do is start messing with the proportions so it's a little bit more nothing's too long nothing's too short okay. and we can bring these lats out okay. so i mean if i'm going to do like a super realistic character i always put the skeleton in here Right, so I'll go uh, right here. I'll insert the eight head male. And then what I'll do is I will put this right at the base of the um, base of the um, sternum, the head of the sternum. And then I'll match it. And then I'll squeeze it all down. So I'll put transparency on. And I'll match my chromium process, right? So I'm matching that now. And that's now my rib cage and my character, right? So I don't want to confuse you all, but if, if you're getting a little bit too out of the way with it or something like that, you can start bringing all this together using the skeleton. But you, what you don't want to do is sculpt it to the skeleton so much it looks like a skeleton, right? But you can start putting the, all this stuff together and seeing how if we just adjust some things, we can kind of put it into place, right? I don't want you all to get too confused with this stuff because this is super advanced stuff. Super advanced. But first, it's more important to understand the muscles, and then you can kind of get where they need to go after that. Right? But you can kind of see we pretty much had it in line. And that's the reason it's important to understand the bony landmarks, because then you know bony landmarks are basically landmarks that regardless of weight and size will always be there. Right. So those things you can put directly on, right. Other things like the pectoralis that are building up stuff like that. You know, you kind of want to put it where it needs to attach and all of that. But, um, due to, um, you know, bodybuilding and all that, it will come off of that as well. Right. So, but you can kind of put things together this way if needed, if you're getting too lost, right? And then you can see how quickly we kind of put them in proportion with just using that skeleton, okay? But, you know, he, he's quite stylized, but it's still a good spot to start from, right? So if you use the skeleton method and, like, what I suggest is that you sculpt how you're going to sculpt and then put the skeleton in there, and then see, okay, well, I always sculpt the chest too far out. My chest is always too thick. Write that down. Okay, my shoulders are always too narrow or they're always too wide. Write that down. And et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
And then what you do is that you sculpt how you're going to sculpt, go through your checklist. And then what you're doing is you're writing into your brain what you need to pay attention to so you can have a more consistent result each time. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Well, I appreciate all of you. Uh, if you have any questions, try to do my best to answer those as soon as possible.